the jaws of a tiger are also a fearsome threat to whatever creature it is hunting. This is an adult tiger skull here, and you know look, the look at this. Yeah, two and a half, three inch yeah. long canines, and those are the killing implements. Uh -huh. Professor Greg Erickson is a biologist from Florida State University. He studies large predators. When tigers attack people, they almost invariably seize them by the back of the neck. What sort of you know, structures would, would you be concerned about if uh, a tiger were to bite someone from the back of the neck? Let's go over to uh, the model here, Jennifer, and see if we can demonstrate that. Dr. Haile Mizgebi is a trauma specialist at Howard University Hospital. From a human trauma point of view, the neck is a very crowded structure, crowded in the sense that it contains a lot of vital structure. The jaws of a tiger fit easily around the neck of a full-grown adult or a child like Rupali. When the cat unleashes its kill bite, the effect can be devastating. That these animals could generate bite force of a thousand pounds. You're talking about a huge amount of force being applied to the soft tissues and bony elements. With a single bite, a full-grown tiger can sever one or more of the enormous vessels that carry blood to the brain, crush the windpipe that supplies life-sustaining oxygen, or shear the spinal cord that is essential for the operation of the heart and lungs. So simultaneously, you've got complete obstruction of airflow, you've got obstruction of blood flow to the brain, you've got paralysis developing from an injury to the spinal cord. And all that combined together, the likelihood that a person can survive this beyond minutes or seconds actually is extremely unlikely. Few could withstand such an assault.